Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Sean and this is We Are Investing. On today's video, we're going to deep dive into Interactive Brokers Global Trader mobile application for your mobile device. This application will allow you to access Interactive Brokers capabilities of trading and buying stocks and options on your smartphone or tablet. With this application, you will be able to trade stocks, options, futures, Forex, and more on over a hundred different markets across the globe. And this application is by far, without a doubt, the easiest to use when it comes to products that are offered by interactive brokers. The way that I like to look at this application, Global Trader, is that it's very similar to Robinhood. It's very simple and it's very easy to use and they don't throw a lot at you. Now, before you download the app and actually are able to trade stocks and options, the first thing you're going to need to do is open an account with Interactive Brokers. To do that, scroll to the video description on this video. You'll see an affiliate link for Interactive Brokers. Click on that. That will send you to this page. Up on the top right, you will open an account. Interactive Brokers has many different types of accounts, so you're going to want to do your research to see which account is right for you. And like I said, Interactive Brokers gives you access to over 100 markets worldwide, so you do not have to live in the United States to open an account with Interactive Brokers. They're offered in so many different countries. I'm just going to say pretty much anywhere in the world you can open an account with Interactive Brokers. Once you have your account set up, the next thing you're going to want to do is download the application. So I'm doing this from an Android. If you're doing it from an iPhone, it's going to be very similar. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to your app store. So for me, it's the Google Play Store. And then you're gonna search for Global Trader by Interactive Brokers. And here is the application, the IBKR Global Trader. You'll click on that and you'll click download. Once it's downloaded, you can open the application and we can proceed with this video. So here you are. This is the home screen. The first time you download the application, it's probably going to be in white. You can change your setting to a dark mode or a light mode. To do that, you're going to click on the icon on the top left, and then you're going to click on settings, display, and you can go from light or dark. I'm going to keep it on dark because that's the preference that I personally like to see. Now we're here back at the home screen and here you're going to see your portfolio value and you can go through different time periods. Right now I have month to date, but you can also go to year to date or you can go over the one year or you can go over the one month. And it's a very simple graph. It's just a line chart and it shows you your progress, your portfolio value over that time. Below your portfolio value, there will be some news. You can swipe to go through that news. If you continue to scroll down, you'll see you have some options here. This is where you can actually deposit money to your account, withdraw money from your account, convert it to a different currency, and you can look at your transactions and account information. We'll dive into a little bit more of that stuff later in this video as well. And then below that, you'll see your top holdings. This is a Roth IRA. I'm not really bullish on the market right now. So all I hold is BOO, which is the S&P 500, and SHY, which is a bond fund, an ETF that is for short-term treasuries, one to three uh, years. Then scrolling below that, you're going to get some of the indices. You're obviously going to get the American ones. So the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Dow Jones. But you also get the Nikkei the uh, Hong Kong exchange and some other ones as well. Next on your home screen is gonna be your watch list. You can customize this. We'll dive into that in a little bit more detail later in this video on how to get that set up. And if you're interested in cryptocurrencies, you can kind of see some of the big coins here as well. We're not gonna to touch on that. Now we proceed to the news portion of the home screen, the general news or top news for the overall market. And then if you hit on portfolio news, it's gonna show you the top news for the stocks that you own in your portfolio. So that's the home screen. Next, let's talk about how to look at stock. So to do that, you're going to want to click on the explore button on the bottom right, and you're going to enter in a ticker symbol. So if we enter in, let's say Tesla, T-S-L-A, you're going to get some options here. You're going to pick on the first one. And now we're looking at Tesla stock. Now, this is a very simplified app, so there's not a lot of settings to change here. This is basically the chart you are given. You can go from this to a line chart, but you're not going to really dive into more details on the charts. You're not going to be able to put in moving averages. You're not going to be able to look at the RSI. All you're able to do is look at these time frames. And then if you click and you kind of move around, you're going to get some information on that bar handle. 
for instance, what the open is, what the close is, what the high is, what the low is, what the change was, and the volume as well. And the time frames that you have are the one day, one week, one month, three month, six month, one year and five year charts. Just below that, you'll have calendar events like earnings, any kind of investor day that's gonna pop up there. You're gonna have some market data for market cap. It's gonna let you know what the earnings per share is and what the price to earnings multiple is for the stock as well. And then you're gonna get a quick little company profile, what the company's all about. You'll get some quick data on the analyst ratings. You're gonna see what the consensus rating is for the stock. For Tesla, it's a buy rating. And then you'll see some firms and what they have and what their ratings are and what their price target is for the uh, stock. Then you get into news and you get the top news for the stocks. So overall, there's not a ton of information here. Um, that's not the point of this app. It's very simplified. It's just easy to get to, easy to trade. And this is more for if you just know what you want to do and just want to execute it, or you are a very basic investor. You're just basically buying into major stocks, major indices, and you're just kind of going with the flow. So now you can see on the top right, there's a little check mark that's blue. That means that it's added to my watch list. If I click on that, I can remove it from my watch list. And if you don't have a stock in your watch list and you wanted to add it, all you do is hit on that little plus mark on the top right of the screen. Now, if you wanted to buy stock or sell stock, you can do it right from the screen. As you can see down below, there is a swap buy sell and options um on buttons that you can click on so to buy the stock obviously you're going to click on buy and then this screen is going to come up now the first thing that you have to know is that there are different types of orders that you can submit to purchase stock right now it's on a limit if you click on that you can see that there's also a market and a stop my suggestion is to always use limit because that's going to tell interactive brokers that you're only willing to pay so much for the stock market is you're saying to interactive brokers, I want stocks and I want them at market price. So whatever you can get it filled at right now is what I want to buy Tesla at. I just think it's always better to have a limit price in there just to protect yourself somewhat. The next thing is you're going to pick your limit price. So in our case, right now, Tesla is at $156.90. We'll just go $155. And then the next thing is you're going to want to pick the amount of shares. In our case, just for this example, we'll do one share. Now the time and force is default at day. You can have good till cancel. Now what this means when you have day is that at the end of the day, if the order does not get filled, it's going to be canceled. And the next day you're going to have to resubmit the order. Good till cancel means that it's going to keep this order in place until it gets filled or you cancel that order. So Interactive Brokers is going to continuously look to try to fulfill this order for you if you have good till cancel selected. The next option that you need to know about is extended hours. So normal market hours are from 9.30 a.m. Eastern time until 4 p.m. Eastern time. If you don't have extended hours clicked, at 4 p.m. is when your day ends and that order gets canceled if it wasn't fulfilled. It also won't look to fill this order if you have good till cancel selected in extended hours unless you have extended hours clicked on. So in our case, we're gonna click it. And as you can see, if you hit the information, it says orders will try to fill outside regular trading hours, which can be risky due to increased volatility and limited volume. So we're gonna keep that in place. We'll hit that time and force. We'll keep it at day. Once you're good, you can sw swipe right, and then you'll get confirmation that your order was submitted. If you don't like your order right away, you can cancel it or you can modify it. We're gonna hit done. Now let's say that after you submitted your order and you did some more research, you wanted to cancel your order, but you don't know where to go to actually cancel it because if you go to your home screen, you're not gonna see an option for that. Well, that's gonna be under your transactions and you can see that there's a little one with a blue circle around it. If you click on that, here are your orders that are currently pending. So we click on that Tesla one, and then we can cancel it right away and we'll cancel that order because I don't actually want to buy Tesla stock. And then you can see that it's crossed out. That means that this order is no longer looking to be filled. So you don't have to worry about it anymore. Now, let's say that you're interested in selling stock that you already own. So to do that, we can click on any stock that you own. For this example, we'll go SHY. We'll click on that. And then you can see that I have 15 shares in SHY. And if I was to click on that little up arrow, I can then click on close position and now I can submit my sell order. So let's say that 
I want to sell at least five shares if the stock was to get to $82 a share. So I'm going to submit a limit order for $82 a share for five shares and for time and force of a day. If I was good with that, I would hit slide to sell and it would confirm that the trade's pending. And then if I wanted to cancel it, I could do it the same way that I canceled that buy order. Selling stock, the process is the same as buying stock. Next, let's go over options. So we're going to go back to the explore tab and we're going to look up another stock. So we'll do uh, GLD, which is the SPR, SPDR gold shares, and we'll click on that. Now to get to options, you're going to click on options on the right here. Now, again, this is very simplified. So if you want to use the easy way to do it, you can say, do you think gold price will go up or down? And then it's going to get you into calls or puts. You can also do other forecasts, such as the price will stay within X amount. The price will move at least this much. Much volatility will go up or volatility will go down. And it's going to help you get into some of those options trading strategies. But for me, I'm going to keep it the way that I always do it, which is the way that I recommend you learn how to trade options, which is going right to the options chain. So we're going to click on options chain and we are going to remove that disclaimer. Now up on the top is your expiration date. So we can go out. Let's say we want to do a January of 2024 option on GLD. So we're going to scroll to January 19th of 2024. Now you have basically two selections. You have to buy or sell and you have calls or puts. We are going to look to get into what's called a call debit spread. This is going to show us how to buy a call and how to sell a call. And the process is going to be the same if you were just going to buy one long call, if you're going to buy one long put, if you were to sell a cash occurred put, or if you wanted to sell covered calls, but you have to own stock in order to sell covered calls. The purpose of this video is not to show you how to do all of those strategies, but if I show you how to do a call debit spread, you're going to see how to do a lot of what you need to do in Interactive Brokers Global Trader when it comes to selecting options to trade. Now, this is all hypothetical. Let's just say that I believe gold is going to go up. I actually do believe that, but this isn't a trade that I'm actually getting into. So the current price is $168. Let's say that I wanted to proceed by buying one long call that's out of the money that has this expiration date of January 19th of 2024. So we'll do it. We'll keep it pretty simple. We'll just do the $180 strike. And you can see that right now it's currently trading at $10.85. Now there's not a lot of information here. All I have is my break even and the ask price. If I click on those three dots on the right there, you can get a simple columns or a detailed columns. Um, Again, still not a ton of information. Again, this is a very basic app. So we're just going to keep it at the simple columns and we're going to click on that $10.85 um, premium for this call option. Now, when selecting options, it's going to give you your risk profile. So with a just a long call option, I have unlimited reward. That's why my green is just moving up and to the right. And I have a limited loss. So my risk is max to how much I pay for this contract. So if I go back to that. It's at $1,142. Now, if I wanted to proceed and buy this call option, all I would do is I would create an order, a limit. I would pick the limit price. If the last price was $10.82, I can match that and put in $10.82. Hit done. And then I can hit preview. And you can see that the amount that it would cost to me is $10.82 in premium times 100. So this contract would cost me $1,082. And then I have a $1.04 commission on top of that. So net, I am at $1,083.04 to get into this contract. If you were good with that, you would submit your buy and it would be confirmed. Now, if you go back a little bit and we click on that again, we can add to strategy to make it a call debit spread. So we'll click on that and that's our first leg. Now to add to your options chain, your options strategy, the next thing that I want to do if I want to get into a call debit spread is I want to sell a call option that is even further out in the money. So we'll click on that $190 strike at $7.75. And now you can see on the bottom right, I have two legs selected. If I click on that, 
it's going to give me my new risk profile. And while that's loading, you can see what the order is for. On the top, it says that I'm looking to buy one January 19th, 2024, $180 call. And I'm looking to sell the same expiration date, that $190 call at $7.75. And here again, it's going to show you your performance profile. So with a call debit spread, my risk is still limited. In this case, it's $653, which is less than it was just to get into that long call because I reduced my cost of entry. But my potential reward to the upside has been reduced. My max return is $1,347. And my break even has been reduced as well. It's currently at $183.26. And that's because it reduced my cost of entry to get into this position. Now, if you scroll down, you can get your probability of profit. You can look at your market data and the Greeks. And if you were good, you would submit create order. And here's where you would submit your limit order, your limit price, the amount that you want, and your time in force, and go from there. Now, let's say that you wanted to buy fractional shares of something. Let's say that you were looking to get into just buy a little bit of the S&P 500, and you didn't have $368 to buy VOO or SPY or some other um, S&P 500 tracking uh, ETF. You could buy fractional shares. It's really easy to do on basically any stock. You click on buy and instead of shares, you're going to click on that. It's blue and you're going to hit USD and then you would put how much money you want to put out on this trans transaction. So let's say that you only wanted to buy $25 worth. You would hit done. And then you can preview your order and you can hit slide to buy and you would buy $25 worth of VOO. So whatever that fraction ended up being, it's real easy to buy fractional shares in interactive brokers. Now there's not a lot more to cover, but in the explore tab, there's some stuff we can talk about. They have popular lists like index ETFs. If you click on that, you're going to get to see which are some of the popular index ETFs out there. We were looking at VOO, another one that's popular is VTI or the SPY. QQQ is probably in here as well. It's not, that's shocking. But here are some popular ETFs. And then you have lists for thematic ETFs and growth ETFs. If we click on growth ETFs, here's your QQQ. Um, these are just popular ETFs. Then you can look at some of the top movers, the top ESG and IPOs as well. And you can find stocks, you can create a stock scanner, but it's very basic. Basically, if you wanted to look at stocks that were mid cap in the United States and based on which industry you could do so. So let's do that example. We'll do a stock scanner. We'll have it mid cap, United States region, energy with a last price of $25 to 50 cents and a PE ratio of under 25 and a dividend yield of zero to two percent you can find stocks and it's going to give you a list of stocks those are basically the customizable fields that you have when creating screeners in this application the other applications will allow you to go in much more detail but like i said a million times in this video this app the purpose is for it to be simple okay the last thing to cover are watch lists so if you click on that here is your watch list if you want to edit it, you just click on the pencil and you can remove stocks from your watch list. And if you want to add stocks to your watch list, you can search for it and click on the plus button on the top right or down here, add to watch list. You can search for the ticker as well. So there you have it. Overall, Interactive Brokers Global Trader is a easy to use mobile application that will allow you to buy and sell stocks and options. Now, this app will be used with other interactive brokers, applications and software that you have. So, for instance, if you're in Trader Workstation and you submit an order to buy a stock and it's fulfilled, it will show up in Global Trader and you can sell that stock from Global Trader or vice versa. It's all integrated together under your account, under your portfolio. Now, that basically concludes this video. If you have any questions, comment down below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. And if you do open an account or are interested in opening an account with Interactive Brokers, use that affiliate link down below to do that. You can also just click on that link to see what they have to offer. And maybe there is something else that will interest you with Interactive Brokers. They are a very reputable brokerage. They've been around for a very long time. They are insured by SPIC and FDIC. But that concludes this video. I thank you so much for your time. 
This is We Are Investing, and together we are invincible. See ya.